You like, I'm gonna have to take you to Little Cross County Jail. No. It's not out yet. Dang it. Today we're gonna talk about cowboy boots. Good morning. Dwayne here. Dry Creek Langer School. Coming to you. Again. Grand Purdy, Texas. Here at our home of our good friends. Had a lot of requests over the months to do a video on cowboy boots. And I've actually, we've actually put together like six or eight different ones. And none of them have turned out. So I'm going to try one more time here. This is going to be a very simple, very straightforward, very practical uh, talk about cowboy boots. You know what I mean, Eli? Yep. What do I look for with a pair of boots? What? Your climate, your terrain, your physical attributes, everything is yours. It's unique. So you have to adjust what works for you. And I'm not talking about boots for fashion. I'm not talking about boots for going dancing, boot scooting or whatever you do. I'm talking about working cowboy boots. When I need a pair of work cowboy boots, what do I look for, Eli? So I just got a pair. I just mm -hmm. got these right here. And these, they checked off most of the boxes, okay? First box, can I afford them? Okay? Mm -hmm. um, if I had the money and the time, I would I would uh, order a pair of Wilson boots and have them handmade and give them an $800. But right now, that's not an option. Can I afford them? I could afford these. These are Tony Llamas. Okay. Secondly, are they made in the U.S.? Second box. These were not. But they were made in Mexico. They were not made in China. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of guys out there buying Arias and other boots that were made in China. And you like them. Wonderful. Not knocking that at all. I'm just giving you my idea, what I look for. I want Con the foot continue. to be leather. Yeah. Just leather. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number one, I don't want it to be suede or rough out. Because you can't oil it. You can't clean it as well. And it doesn't, in my experience, it doesn't shed water and, and wet weather as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't want an exotic. I don't want caiman. I don't want alligator. I don't want snake. I don't want ostrich. I want a good leather. Okay. Mm hmm. Very humble. And a leather shaft. Oh, okay. The next thing I want is I want a lower heel. Yep. Now, for years, I wore boots with riding heels, higher heels, or spur ledge. But now I find these days that with my knees and as I'm getting older, mm -hmm. my physical um, limitations that the higher heels just hurt me and I can't wear them. Unfortunately. On a medium round toe. Now, the purpose of a medium round toe for me, Eli, it's a lot, it's designed to get into a stirrup quickly, if need be. Mm-hmm. And then? Uh, I'll show you here in a second. So if you're stepping into the saddle and, you know, you try to get in a situation where this isn't an issue, but mm -hmm. when you ride a lot of horses, sometimes as you're swinging over the saddle, the horse is not cooperating like he should. And you might need to swing over, sit down, and jab that toe in that stirrup. Mm -hmm. Every horse I ever got bucked off of, you know, it was after a stirrup. You're a lot more likely to ride a fractious horse if you have your feet in the stirrup. Okay. And if you're swinging your leg over, and just as you're over the top, and as you're committed, they start moving and they start cutting up. They start doing something. If you're down there kicking and jabbing your toe in that stirrup, mm -hmm. you've already lost the battle. Okay. I see. Yeah. The other thing is, 
the welt. This is a regular normal welt. The big thing these days is double welted. And the sole of the boot sticks out. So why does my thumb? Makes no sense at all. Yeah. There's no practical reason for that. It's just... It's just a style. And style is not driven by work practicality. Mm-hmm. And same thing is, why would you, if you're riding horses for a living, do you want that much of a toe that you have to fit into a stirrup? Why? It doesn't make sense. I, I couldn't tell you. And I want the leather sole. This is getting hard to find. These things together in a decent made boot. I like the leather sole. I like it because it's smooth. It's slick. Yeah. I'm sick of these monkeys saying they can be taken out the jungle, but you can never take the jungle out the monkey. <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> Ule, which is a Canadian company, it is an excellent made boot. The materials are excellent. The construction is excellent. I can't wear this boot. And it's not the boot's fault. Oh, <gasps> shit. I wanted, uh, I wanted the riding heels in the high arch. I wish I could I see it. Them. But then when I got them, if I wear this boot two days, my knees are so bad, I can't even walk. Oof. I hardly walk. Yeah, you got it. I'm just illustrating the fact that on paper, everything that looks on paper, like it's what you want, mm -hmm. it may not all fit you. Um, so you can't just watch a video and say, then that's exactly what I need. It's like anything else. Okay, it takes experience. It takes try. It takes the the humility, the ability to say, well, I was wrong there. Okay, I need to do something else. Mm -hmm. You know. So now I got a pair of $265 cowboy boots that I can't wear. So one of my boys is going to get lucky one day, I guess. <laughs> Alright, I'll be back. Okay. <laughs>